Robotics Capstone teaches the basics of motion, navigation, perception, and planning. And students begin using robots to help make people's lives easier. For us, we got to come up with what we wanted to do, basically figure out how we're going to do it all on our own. We're given some direction and like, oh, this is a good library to use, this could help your projects. But when it comes down to it, we got to be you know, finding stuff on our own, really completing the task. We told students was to look in their everyday environments and find something that's typically stationary and then make it move on its own through the robot. You will see in the demos, the students came up with some very creative ideas and this was part of uh, the Capstone project, sort of uh, exercising your creativity and design. By the time they get to the stage, students are very good at solving problems that we give them, uh, but this is an opportunity for them to define their own problem and think about why it's important, what are the real challenges, and then go ahead and uh, solve it with the skills that they have. Everyone had done a lot of brainstorming, and he's like, what if you did a mobile trash can? And I'm like, that's really stupid. And then I thought about it for another minute. I'm like, wait, that's brilliant. I take it back. I'm pretty amazed by how people have figured all these things out so we can use it for our project. We are uh, Team Wildcat. We made a cute little mobile garbage can. If you go to an office environment, every desk has its own trash can. That ends up being a lot of waste in trash cans, which are only like a quarter full at the end of the day. What if the trash can could come to you instead? So we have this external connect, which is tracking the skeletons of people that are in the room. Once the robot arrives at the location, it will wait for a verbal command to go back. Um, in this case, it's good job, Wildcat. One of the bigger challenges was having to actually map the external connect, transforming that point of view into our map, and then making sure that whatever location is given by that connect, this robot can actually move to that specific location. We've begun evaluation, um, and so far the only test we've carried out, what part of the sequence of the entire system was the slowest in from a user's perspective? We were thinking that if one were to put this into practice in an actual office environment, you would need multiple connects realistically. We're also very limited by the angle right here, but this kind of shows that this works. And just like we set up a transform for this connect to the map, we could set up as many connects as we wanted, and each one could have its own transform. The biggest challenge about this uh, project is actually getting to know the software that, that we're using to actually develop uh, an autonomous uh, system. You know, we only have a quarter to do this project, so it's a, it's a challenge to and just to like figure out how everything works together. Our group is the Turtle Fan Group. So the motivation for this project uh, was we had a pretty hot summer and it would be inefficient to get air conditioning because I was only ever in one room at a time. So it made sense to have the fan carry itself around. What the Turtle Fan does is it's controlled by an HTML5 web interface uh, and it has two modes. There's a mode for following you and there's a mode for just staying still. Uh, there's also a way to trigger the <coughs> fan oscillation, so like in regular fans, it'll spread the air around, or you can just have a steady stream of air. Uh, there's a lot of parts for not very many features, but we have the GUI, which I said is HTML5. The functional evaluation is we wanted it to actually be able to follow the person, um, and so we set up some tests and we found that it performed pretty well when you take out all the other obstacles. Uh, we wanted our interface to be simple enough that you could just sit somebody in front of it. And we found that it was very successful. Most people, we could say, all right, turn the fan oscillation off, and they would be able to click the off button without us telling them where it is. And then we also wanted to uh, make sure the fan was actually cooling people down. And surprisingly, that little fan has a lot more power than it looks and was able to do some decent cooling. Uh,